Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast, your go-to source for personal, professional, and organizational growth and development. We hope you tune in often for all things people management, organizational development and change, organizational leadership, and social impact related. Maximize your personal and organizational potential with Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. In this HCI podcast episode, I talk with Justin and Alexis Black about conversations on healthy relationships, mental health, and healing. Justin and Alexis Black, welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah, it's an honor for us to be able to talk to you today. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure. I'm excited to have a nice conversation. And, and you both do some really cool work. You, you have a, a nice track record of, of a variety of things that you've done. I'll share your bio in just a moment to give listeners a little bit of a, a taste of it. Um, but today we're going to be focusing more specifically on healthy relationships, mental health, and healing. And of course, that can take place in any context. All of those elements take place in our personal mm-hmm. lives at home. It takes place, um, you know, for young people at school and with their friend groups. It takes place in the workplace with our colleagues, with our teams. Uh, people are complex. People are messy. People have egos. People um, have insecurities. Like there's all sorts of stuff that goes into relationship building and navigating all of that complexity and messiness. And frankly, we often aren't very good at it. Um, and, and so that's where resentment, resentments come up. That's where misunderstandings happen. That's where um, people, you know, really get frustrated with each other. And, you know, that's hard in the, in the home. It's, it's hard at school, in the workplace, it's hard. That also means you're probably lowering productivity. You're probably going to have good people leave. And ultimately, it's going to hurt the bottom line of the company. And so if, if I, as an organizational leader, want to try to help my um, company be successful, I want my team to be successful, a huge part of my focus has to be on relationship building, uh, mm-hmm. relationship uh, mending and healing, and just helping people to work well together. So these are the, some of the types of things we'll be exploring together today. As we get started, I just wanted to share Justin and Alexis's brief bio with everybody. Justin and Alexis are authors, speakers, and business owners. Together, they've created the Scholarship Expert and the Rose Empowerment Group to support hundreds of young people. Now, with their new venture, Redefining Normal, they hope to continue the conversation on healthy relationships, mental health, and healing. Uh, Wonderful. And uh, Justin and Alexis, anything else you would like to add by way of your background, your personal context before we launch on into the conversation? Yeah, I mean, we are both recent graduates. I would add that in there. And then um, also interesting fact that we are both uh, former foster youth. And we so we aged out of foster care. And um, I was adopted as an adult. And so that I think has, well, I know it has informed a lot of what we do every day. Uh, Mm -hmm. It really informed our book, which is called Redefining Normal, How to Foster Kids Beat the Odds and Discovered Healing, Happiness and Love. So absolutely with that. Uh, and then several of our companies, I mean, right now we own five companies. And so this redefining normal aspect is really the defining factor and the foundation of all of them. Uh, but they go in different directions depending on who we're serving. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's covered a lot, but um, so much of what we do, we, we just want to serve and improve people's lives in one way or another, whether it's personal, professional, or uh, mental health. So that's really what we want to do. Yeah, that's, that's wonderful. And, and a very, very noble um, effort. So I guess that already gets to a little bit of, you know, the, the meat behind my first question. But if you can expound on it a little bit, what's really your, your purpose, your mission, your drive behind all of these different endeavors? Uh, I imagine part of it comes from your own personal upbringing, your desire to pay it forward to, to help uh, others, other youth uh, from similar challenging backgrounds. Uh, but, but like you said, you, you, it's broad, it's much more broad than that. You, you focus on helping people from all walks of life and all different types of settings, including within organizations to try to figure out how to, you know, 
deal and be more healthy in these relationships. Um, so what, what, what's the main drive behind all of that? And what, what are you hoping to accomplish at the end of the day? Yeah, of course. Uh, it's a great question. So, so much of what we've learned throughout our lives and our personal experiences, see growing up in foster care and not even just foster care, but what so many people have to go through. We witnessed that our parents kind of build the foundation of who we are, their relationship with each other and the relationship and culture that they built for themselves that's passed down to us eventually. So this culture that is built for us, we pass this culture along to, uh, it, th that culture goes with us to the workplace. It goes with us to school and every single setting we're covered we were a reflection of that culture that, that was built by our mother and our father and the people we were raised by, our family dynamic, which goes to the family, the community and the society overall. So this culture that goes with you everywhere, it starts with your mother and father, even if your mother was absent or your father was absent or both of them were absent. That is a part of your culture and something that will impact your character and identity. So with us being in foster care, growing up with our parents and having our normal, so to speak, um, seen as a certain way, which was unhealthy a lot of times. Uh, our normal and our culture was unhealthy and we had to go through the process of unlearning and relearning because we internalized that process and expressed it in our friendships, in our romantic relationships, personal relationships, um, professional relationships in every single area of our lives. So we had to go through the process of unlearning and relearning and we help others do that. We break that down in, in many different ways to uh, what does the community look like? What is your definition of family? For us, it may not, it wasn't biological because we had to separate, make that separation and that boundary. So we go through those levels and different things and just challenge people to do the same because we all have to go through that process of redefining, no matter if you've grown up in foster care or in a two-parent household. In some area of our lives, we have to go through that process of redefining it may not be the entire culture or undoing all that trauma like we've done, but in one area or another, whether it's finance, communication, your romantic relationships, how you build friendships, uh, being a first generation college student, or whatever it is, you have to go through that process of redefining. So that's what we challenge people to do. That's what we help people to do through many different workshops, products, and presentations. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And Alexis, anything you would like to add to that? I mean, I think he summed that up <laughs> pretty well. <laughs> okay, very, very good. So let's uh, zoom in and focus a little bit now on workplace relationships. Mm -hmm. Now, if we if we want, you know, our team to hum, and we we want you know us to be a fine tuned team, we want we want to work together effectively. We want to be innovative. We want to be creative. Yet people have their egos. People um, have their baggage. Their own backgrounds, they have their own unique perspective on the world and their own attitudes and feelings and emotions. And, the, and we bring that all together. And let's say it's even a relatively small team at work. Um, and these people are around each other, you know, eight plus hours a day, you know, four or five plus days a week. Um, man, you, you better at least be able to figure out how to get along professionally, uh, if you want to have mm -hmm. success. But a lot of times people really dislike who they work with. And in fact, there are many studies, I've done some of them myself, that talk about the, the importance of the role of relationship with your coworkers, mm -hmm. relationship with your boss. And the number one reason why people leave a job is not because they get paid crappy or because, you know, the, uh, there's, there's other, you know, direct problems with the work that they do, even if it sucks. They, they, people tend to leave a job or they tend to stay with a job first and foremost, because of the relationship they have with their boss and their mm -hmm. coworkers. Uh, so if we want to attract and retain good people, if we want them to work well together and be productive and innovative, we just have to have people who develop good relationships. Yet, you know, we come with all this messiness and all this baggage that we all have. Um, so what would you say, like, what are some of the things that you've seen, either even if it's from some of these other populations you work with, how would that, you know, what are some of the key principles and how would they apply in a workplace setting? And, as we're trying to figure out how to unlearn the unhealthy stuff that maybe we're doing, or maybe that we've experienced and now relearn how I can actually have an engaging, meaningful, healthy set of interactions and relationship with people at work. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, in the way that we see leadership uh, and the way that we wrote our book, the way that we operate our companies is all around 
uh, transparency and vulnerability. And so that's really the fundamentals of who we are and what we try to portray. And so that's how we build our team. And so it's always important to make sure that you're building a team that's cohesive and fits into the culture that you're trying to build. We've actually, uh, we've only been in business, it hasn't even been a year yet. Um, and we've had upwards to 17 people on our team um, when, uh, when you account for like interns and all of that. And we've had to let several people go because they maybe don't fit into the culture or maybe um, it's, yeah, I would say more or less is not creating the culture that we want on our team. Uh, and so we also have to make sure that we are taking into account that who we are as beings, it doesn't leave at the door when we step into what we're working on and the projects that we're working on. We are, we are dynamic. We have all these different pieces of us. And so we have to make sure that as team leaders that we are acknowledging that, but then also we are, we openly talk about our failures, the things that we mess up on, what we're learning from. Uh, we make sure that we are building a team that's learning from each other, not just what we're learning in the workplace, but also life lessons. And, um, and I would also say that also being really um, open and honest about things that are going on outside of the workplace. So like, say if we have a coworker that is really struggling with something, they don't necessarily have to tell us what it is, but you know, just that open communication with us so that we can be compassionate and be there for them in the way that they need it. And uh, if they need time or, or whatever it is that we can work around that. But communication is the biggest piece of any team that you're trying to build and make sure that you're there for them, not just in the work sense, but how are you there for them outside of that? And it's really sometimes just showing up in, in the way that they need you to. So that's the culture that I would say that we're trying to build. And from every person that has left their position since we started, which we're on our, I think our third round of interns now, uh, and every single one has mentioned how that has really empowered them to be their full self in this position, even when they have different things that come up, different seasons of life, even in a couple months with dealing with COVID and school and all these different things and how can we support them? So that I know for us has been incredibly impactful. Yeah, I, I love your focus on the whole self and the authenticity of the, the lived experience of your people. They, they can't check everything at the door. Mm -hmm. um, and that it, it kind of blows my mind, but I hear that so often that leaders will say things like, you know, you got your home stuff. <laughs> yeah, check it at the door, leave it your home stuff at home when you're at work, work, focus. Um, and, and just be, they say, be professional, quote unquote, be professional. Yeah. Um, well, I'm all for professionalism, but that doesn't, you know, we, we can't just uh, uh, check our emotions and everything that we're dealing with. Like, there's no way to, to separate that. Like, it is going to bleed over. I'm excited to announce the publication of my new book from HCI Press, The Alchemy of Truly Remarkable Leadership, Ordinary Everyday Actions That Produce Extraordinary Results. Consider how the nature of work has shifted over the past 50 years. With increased globalization, rapid technological advancement, and the shift in economic composition, the average job of today looks very different than the average job of 50 years ago. What will the jobs and organizations of tomorrow look like? Moreover, what does this all mean for organizational leaders? What are the core competencies and capabilities of organizations and their leadership that are prepared for continued disruption and geopolitical and socioeconomic shifts? Regardless of what the future holds, increasingly, leaders need to be socially minded, data driven, decisive, champions of talent, and disruptors of the traditional notions of leadership, teams, organizations, and work. The Alchemy of Truly Remarkable Leadership will help you to explore your own leadership competencies and capabilities and consider ways to apply and implement them into your workplace and personal life. Like you said, we don't need to ask all the details. That's none of our business. Mm -hmm. if, they, if they choose to share... Um, then we can provide a listening ear and support and, and, and such. But even if we can just know that, yeah, they're dealing with something, it's tough. We can, we can see it. We can notice it. Let's be supportive. Let's be helpful. 
Um, let's help them know that we're there for them, that we want them to find success at work as well as in their personal life. Man, those that type of communication, that kind of vulnerability, that kind of sharing, that kind of support, that is going to do more to build healthy, meaningful, sustainable relationships mm-hmm. uh, at work than just about anything else you can do. And it com- always comes back to trust. Um, if, if someone, you know, comes to work because they just, you know, maybe there's a pile of things at home, like this thing happened, that thing happened, they're having a fight with their, with their partner, the car, they, you know, broke down, they like, there's just all these things, these stresses, these anxieties that have built up, they come f- to work frazzled, like just knowing that work is a safe place where people aren't going to assume the worst of them when they walk in five minutes late because their car broke down or they had to change a tire on the way to work or whatever, like just that simple kind of an environment that it goes a huge long way in, mm-hmm. in making sure that people feel like, yeah, this is a great place to be. And even, you know, I'm all for paying people well, pay people well, give them good benefits, treat people and invest in people, you know, with, with, uh, treat them with dignity and respect. So I'm not in any way advocating that we don't like pay people well or cut corners, but honestly, like if you may not even pay people that great, but if you treat them that way, where they know, you know, they just had a hard time getting their kids ready for school and dropping them off and this, that, and the other. And now they're at work and they're a little bit frazzled as they're getting started with their day, but they know they can come to work and that they'll be supported in that as they get rolling, man, people are going to be committed to that kind of an organization yeah. and to that kind of a culture. Uh, on the flip side, you know, you could pay people quite well, like way above market. And, but they, they know that they're just getting hammered every, every time, every little thing, and that they're constantly being um, monitored and treat, you know, treated like children, uh, rather than the adults that they are. And, you know, they're going to be looking for the next opportunity, because they don't want to stick around in that kind of an environment. So I think everything you're saying certainly resonates with me. uh, As I hear you describing it, I, I think it's, it's good food for thought, we need to really carefully consider all of that as we're, uh, leading our teams and trying to make sure uh, that uh, we're, we're creating a healthy environment at work where people can have those good relationships. Mm-hmm. Well, I think also with that, um, you can take little lessons and say, I think this is a good learning opportunity, or I think we should have a meeting to talk about this more. And I've had several of those with people where, say, we had one intern who um, he was very overwhelmed, but he didn't communicate with that with us, even though we were asking, you know, how are things going? Can you, can you talk to us? Let us know. And then he abruptly just quit and said, you know, I have too much going on, whatever. And then I said, well, can we get on a call? So I think this would be a great learning opportunity because you don't want to do this outside of this is an internship. So this is more of a safe place with less risk, but you don't want to do that in, in your next job or, you know, your dream job or whatever it is, or even, especially if you own a company, you can't have a client and say too much. I back off, like back off. I'm done. Uh, rather than in communication. So I think you can, you need to take those opportunities to make sure that you're handling things, especially if you have interns, uh, to make sure that they're learning these life lessons to move forward. Mm-hmm. Uh, Justin, anything else uh, that strikes uh, you that you'd like to add? You you it perfectly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, great. So let's, let's talk a little bit more um, then as we get closer to wrapping up um, about the, the healing component. So let's say, you know, we have colleagues at work, they've, they've, uh, you know, they haven't been great with each other, they haven't communicated well, they haven't shown trust in each other. They, they've even backstabbed even, even uh, had unhealthy behaviors, and there's resentment and hard feelings. So then what I'm a leader, I'm in that situation. I know that I have people on my team, there's like conflict, there's, um, there's just this dynamic that's not healthy. What do, what do I do about that at that point? I mean, there's so many, so many things I should be trying to do proactively before that ever happens, but let's say that now happens, or maybe I come, I've just been hired into that situation. What do I do to try to uh, uh, disassemble that, you know, and, and to dismantle and, and rebuild something where those people can work well together? That's a hard one. And that, there's no guarantee if, you know, some team members have a, a bad relationship um, sometimes in that sense, you may need to uh, try to encourage them to take the more professional route. But what you can do is you can try to take them one on one and say, hey, you know, uh, what can I do to help you in this situation? You know, one thing we always try to do in leadership is always listen, uh, approach the situation with certain communication. 
um, you know, sitting on the same level, uh, talking to them a certain way, just, just trying to listen to see what they're saying and what can you do to ease their pain. You know, active listening is not only just hearing the words, but you taking action and receiving what they're saying and putting them in the best position to be successful. So you maybe listen to both parties and say, okay, this is what this person needs to be successful. This is what that person needs to be successful. And you put them in that environment and eventually you need to also get them in the same room, but also be the mediator and, and let them know that this is how we'll communicate. This is a certain standards and rules to, to respect, to honor each other, to be there for each other. And this is how we're gonna move forward, but allow them to create that communication because as a leader, you're raising other you're raising other leaders. You don't always want to view the people under you as followers, but many leaders in their on their own. And as they grow into that leadership role, I mean, really as a leader, you want to be able to empower them to say, hey, I can leave for a few days or not think about the my position for a few days, and they can take care of things on their own. So you want to be able to put them in position to um, do that themselves. And as they do that, they need to learn how to communicate and uh, work with others, even if it is someone with maybe a difficult personality. You may have to, <laughs> it's kind of like when we do foster parent trainings. Each child that a foster parent has is going to have a different personality, and you can't approach the situation the exact same for every single person. So, with an employee or a team member, you can't approach every single team member with the, the same you know, approach. Some team members for, for team building activities, you may need to take an exam to see how they communicate. <laughs> Some mm -hmm. people uh, may do like a, a love languages test to, you know, figure something out, but I'm sure there's like quizzes and activities out there to understand how certain team members operate, what they need. You can create that quiz to see, you know, um, how they communicate. But I think that'd be a good way to, to understand them beforehand, before, you know, they even get into a situation. So getting as much information about the person as possible so they can be in position to succeed. And if they do run into some type of conflict, let them know and understand that uh, this is how we're gonna handle things. And uh, we need to be accommodated and help them meet in the middle ultimately. But I think that's probably the most important that help them meet in the middle and help them have an open dialogue and communication. So they both can be the bigger person and. Uh, both take leadership role in that situation. Yeah, yeah, well said. I, I, I agree with what you said. And uh, it that really is a difficult situation. And there's no guarantee that you're going to be able to work it out. You may end up having to transfer one of the people or mm -hmm. maybe even get rid of one of the people. Like sometimes things are just too messy and sometimes they don't work out. But I think far too often organizations jump to that way too quickly. Um, they say, oh, this is, you know, they just can't get along. And so, so now we're going to like blow up the team and send people off in different directions or fire people. Um, and then you, you lose that human capital. You, you lose their expertise. You lose their insights, their experience, their institutional yeah. knowledge. And may, maybe that's fine. Maybe that's what needs to happen. But a lot of times we forego those difficult conversations that we could do first, you know, to see, can we mediate this? Can, can, you know, I, I do have a belief that most people want to try to be kind to each other. Most people want to try to be mature adults. Um, we were not always good at it, but I think we want to try to do that. And so approach it that way with the assumption that people want to, um, want to try to work things out and then we can help facilitate it and we can help people, communicate perhaps what maybe hasn't been said so that we can work through the resentments or the the frustrations or or whatever and give it a good faith try and if it's still if it doesn't work yeah maybe you need to move on maybe you need to reconfigure the team um, but you, you might find that you're able to work through things and my experience has been when I've been able to work when I've had personal conflict with other colleagues at work when I've taken the time to go out of my way to reach out to them to try to smooth things over with them uh, apologize when necessary to try to seek understanding, try to listen to them, help understand their perspective. When I go through, go through that process with them, usually we go from a, a situation that we're both frustrated, mad at each other to the point where we're like, yeah, we're, you know, like we're buddies. We, we, now we're, we're going to work. We have a relationship now because we understand each other where we're coming from. Now we can work better together. And I mean, truly that's how 
relationships are built is we have to work through that kind of stuff, whether it's a romantic relationship, a friendship, a workplace relationship. I, I think, you know, we have to give it a chance. So I appreciate all of the insights you both have provided for us today. Um, there's no easy answer, but it's, it's, a, it's an effort that's well worth um, the time and the attention. Before we close today, I wanted to give you a chance to share with listeners how they can get connected with you, find out more about your organization, the work that you do, the, the products and services that you offer, and then give us the final word on the topic for today. Yeah, so you could find out more information on us on our website at read-definingnormal.com. Our book, uh, Redefining Normal, is available on our website as well as Amazon and all the major booksellers. We have the uh, Rose from the Rose from Concrete podcast, uh, which you can see right behind me, uh, which is mainly Justin, but I'm going to be on there sometimes. Uh, we're on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, you name it, we're there. Uh, and then do you want to say something for the closing word? Yeah, of course. So um, we always want to challenge people to join the conversation and join the movement of Redefining Normal. You know, it has been mainly just me and Alexis, but we, we want a community of people to go through, like I said, that redefining process in some area of your life. So uh, Alexis is giving you our contact information. Feel free to email us also at info at redefiningnormal.com for more information to book us on uh, numerous different topics uh, on culture building, uh, character development. Uh, timing and time management, so many things that we'd like to cover to improve people's lives, so many products and services that we have, but we want to ultimately challenge others to go through that process and join that conversation. So thank you all so much, and we appreciate you. Mm -hmm. Well, before we forget, I want to make sure that we offer 50% off autograph copies on our website mm -hmm. at redefiningnormal.com, and the promo code is 50 off RN. so it's 50 off RN. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Justin and Alexis. It's been a real pleasure talking with you. Uh, I encourage listeners to reach out, get connected, find out more about what you can do for them. As always, I hope everyone can stay healthy and safe, that you can find meaning and purpose at work each and every day. And I hope you all have a great week. We are excited about the launch of HCI's new magazine, Human Capital Leadership. Human Capital Leadership is a free, interactive e-magazine designed to help individuals, leaders, and organizations find innovative approaches to maximize their human capital potential. We will be publishing issues quarterly in August, November, February, and May. Check out the first issue and let us know what you think. Thanks again for joining us for this episode of the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. I hope you stay healthy and safe and that you have a great week. Check out our new weekly LinkedIn newsletter, Alchemizing Human Capital, exploring industry trends via original research and interviews with executives and thought leaders from across the globe. We look forward to having you join us.